In Las Vegas, Cuba, in 1934, the two sons of Benito, a wealthy landowner in the town of Aguada, were taken hostage. Jose and Claudio Giraldi were walking to their father's ranch when they were kidnapped. The kidnappers were well armed and demanded $30,000 for their release, and they then lowered their ransom to $800, which was handed over to them near Benito's ranch, and the boys were released. When the locals, the police, and the military became aware, the posse went after the abductors. It was made known to the newspaper reporters by Alejandro Vergara, the mayor of Aguada de Pasajero, that these fugitives were part of a well-organized crime gang that worked the area. A violent shootout ensued, capturing one Alejandro Mederos, who was found with weapons, ammunition, and money from the kidnapping. Benito was my great-granduncle, brother to my great-grandfather, Felix Giraldi Hernandez. Benito de los Dolores Giraldi Hernandez was born the 21st of March, 1874, in Alacranes, Matanzas, Cuba. He was the son of Domingo Giraldi Focha and Facunda Hernandez Mendez. His father, Domingo, was an Italian immigrant to the island, and his mother was born in Cuba. When I was growing up, my father once in a while would recount, Domingo Giraldi, when interacting with others, was difficult for the locals to understand, as he only spoke Italian. There's a lot of mystery surrounding the Giraldi family in Cuba. The origin of the prior spelling of the name Giraldi is a bit cloudy, but we have learned interesting details in addition to the family history that was passed down. Thanks to Cousins in Cuba, we have Benito's baptism record and the names of his ancestors, which were my great-grandfather Felix's ancestors, and through him mine. The baptism reads, Benito, son of Domingo Giraldi, native of Italy, and Facunda Hernandez, native to Alacranes. Paternal grandparents, Vicente Giraldi and Constantina Focha. Maternal grandparents, Manuel and Maria Mendez. Benito had various siblings. Originally, at least according to my father's recollection, they were four, Benito, Juan y Solina, and Feli Giraldi Hernandez, my great-grandfather. But in conversations with family in Cuba, there were more siblings. Juan Giraldi Hernandez married Isaura Horta, and they had Elsevia Hilda, Romualdo, and Ezequiel Giraldi Horta. Dr. Ezequiel Giraldi married Hilda Maria Michelena Conde. And they had two children, Juan Manuel and Feli Justo Giraldi Michelena. Isolina married Manuel Antuña, and likewise they had descendants. And Felix Giraldi Hernandez married Romualda Alvarez Gonzalez. Felix and Romualda had four children, Luis, Ramona, my grandmother, Evangelina, and Ramon Giraldi Alvarez. Benito married Regla de la Caridad Hernandez Quintero, and they had many descendants. Earlier, we mentioned Jose and Claudio Giraldi, who were kidnapped back in 1934. Eventually, Claudio would become the mayor of Aguada de Pasajeros. And Benito had other sons like Martín Liborio Giraldi Hernández. He was a Cuban consul and traveled widely across the Caribbean and Florida in the 1940s. Martín was also a reporter for the national newspaper Prensa Libre. And on one occasion in 1952, he became the subject of various headlines when police mistreated him physically. He had witnessed the police mistreating someone and he had intervened and then became the focus of their attention. But that's a story for another day. Martin was married to Seida Ferrer Perez and they had descendants. Now, after reviewing DNA matches and looking at their trees, the original spelling of the Giraldi surname was more than likely Giraldi. And in Cuba, it became Giraldi. This is the direction the evidence is pointing to, but it's still being looked at. In the 1800s, as Italian families left Europe for the Americas in large numbers, once here, in many cases, the surnames changed and adapted for various reasons, in many cases, to suit their surroundings or due to clerical errors, filling out documents and such. Not only did Italians settle in the U.S., but likewise across all the Americas, and in our case, they settled in Cuba. Early on, Benito discovered an old chest buried on his property, and it was full of old Spanish gold coins. He manufactured jewelry from some of those coins, which he gave to family. Beyond this, I know little other than one granddaughter of his, explaining that she had sold the gold when her family was in need at some point. Now, growing up, my grandmother had and always valued gold in the form of chains, bracelets, watches, and rings. 
And I can imagine that being something carried over from the family, back from when Benito found the chest. There used to be a saying among the neighbors in Aguada, which they'd use for any number of things as a catchphrase, until Giraldi turns on the lights, hasta que Giraldi encienda. That's because the Giraldi family brought electricity to the town in the early 20th century. As written down by my father, Eloy Escajedo Giraldi, he said the following. In the town of Aguada in 1913, the Giraldi brothers, Benito, Juan, Felix, and Isolina, built an electrical plant and began to provide service. From Walda Alvarez Gonzalez, Felix's wife, recounted that they put the first electric lights in some private houses for free to demonstrate that this new method of lighting was not dangerous. Since all kinds of rumors spread around town regarding this form of lighting, the Giraldis put the power plant to work a few hours a day, and from there arose the popular saying, until Giraldi turns on, which the citizens used to describe different situations. Researching, I've been able to find documentation. On the 14th of June, 1913, Presidential Decree Number 230, published in the official Gazette in Havana, in it, it authorizes Benito Giraldi to construct his power plant and the manner in which he's to go about it. And it was authorized by the president of Cuba, Mario Garcia Menocal. In the mid-1920s, a representative of the Cuban Electric Company met with the Giraldis and had told them that he had come to purchase the electric plant. The Giraldis refused to sell, to which the representative told them, if you don't sell, we will put our own lines in and we'll charge less than you. And then the Giraldis sold the power plant and all the wiring. The Cuban Electric Company was only Cuban in name, since the real owners were American companies that had joined together. Starting in the 1940s, electric service reached almost all the towns of relative importance in the municipalities. And electricity rarely failed. It was day and night, 24 hours a day. Today, under the communist regime, blackouts occur throughout the island. And they're common. And the Cubans jokingly say, they're not blackouts, but lightings. Looking forward to when the power does come back on, instead of when it goes off. Benito died in 1941. And this is a photo of the funeral procession that day, sent by family. 